Hello everyone. So in this video, we want to solve this question that is a BJT in a circuit. And what we want to find, we want to find the V10, V11, and V12, as well as the I collector, I base, and this should be I emitter. All right, so the first thing that we know is that we have a P and P transistor, right? And then when we have a P and P transistor, this will be our emitter, this will be our collector, and then this is our base. So the first thing that we know in this circuit is that beta is very high. So when beta is very high, what we can assume is that beta is going to infinity. So when that is true, we know that IB is equal to IC, or let me go with the same case. So IB is equal to IC over beta. And when beta goes to infinity, I beta will be equal to zero. So our base current will be equal to zero. Now, what else I can figure out here? We know that in um, BJTs, since this is a PNP transistor, what we have is that we have IE going this way in this direction, and then we have IC in this direction, and IB like this. So based on these directions of these currents, IE, the I emitter, is actually equal to I base plus I collector. What we found here was that I base is equal to zero, so that will be equal to zero. Therefore, I emitter is equal to I collector. Now, what else we can find from here? Let's look at the circuit itself and see if we can um, figure out what else we have and um, what else we can find. So one thing is that if we look at this part of the circuit, so the emitter part of this BJT, I can write a KCL here. So I have 3 minus V11 over 6.2. That is the equation for the emitter part. Now, we said that IE is equal to IC. So I can equate this to V12 minus minus 3 over 10 and this is kilo ohm and this is kilo ohm so technically this is my i emitter and this is my i collector so here is just one equation that we can use but we won't do anything with it right now we'll just go back and see what else we have Another thing that we know in this PNP transistor, VEB is given as 0 0.7. So this is a given, and this is also given. So VEB is equal to 0 0.7, so that will help us later. Now, what else I can find over here? I can look at the voltage that I have at the base. Over here, this is the base voltage, right? So VB. Therefore, my VB is actually equal to V10. Um, At the same time, I will have some current in this branch. And since IB is equal to zero, all of this current is coming down. So if I call this some I, I can say that these two are equal to each other. So for those two green eyes, I'm going to just write the case here. So we have 3 minus V base or V10 over 180K. That is equal to V10 or V base minus minus 3 over 300K. So from here, I can find VB. Now, let's just solve for this equation. So I have 900 minus 300 VB is equal to 180 VB plus 540. From here, VB 
which is equal to V10, is going to be equal to 3 over 4 or 0 0.75. Okay, so these two kilo ohms will be cancelled. I mean, the unit will be cancelled. Therefore, I have a volt over here. So I found V10 and I found IB. Now that I have V10, so technically I have VB. I also had VEB. It was given in the question. So VEB is equal to VE minus VB. And that is equal to VE minus the VB that we just found, which is 0 0.75. And that is equal to 0 0.7, which is given in the question. So from here, V emitter that is also equal to V11 is equal to 1.45 volts. So I found V11 as well. Now that I have V11, I can go back to this equation over here. I'm going to just bring it down and I'm going to substitute for V11. Therefore, we're going to have 3 minus V11. V11 is 1.45, we just found it, over 6.2K is equal to V12 minus minus 3 over 10K. So I found this. Now from this equation, I can easily find V12. So from this equation, if I just solve it, what I'm going to get is that V12, that is also equal to V collector, will become negative 0 0.5 volt. So we found V collector or V12. Now, what is left is actually I collector and I emitter. And I know that I collector and I emitter, I already have their equation over here. So I can just find one of them and then they're equal to each other. So I have the other one. I collector, it says that is equal to V12 plus 3 over 10K. That will be equal to negative 0 0.5 plus 3 over 10 kilo ohms. So that is 2.5 over 10K. And that would be 0 0.25 multiplied by 10 to the negative 3 amps which is equal to 0 0.25 milliamp so i found i collector and we know that i emitter we just found out that i emitter is equal to i collector and that is equal to 0 0.25 milliamps now we found all of the variable that we were looking for in this question but one thing that you really have to check every time it's necessary to check is that we were all using these equations. They're all from the um, BJT when it is operating in the active region. So we have to figure out if the active region is true here or not. Okay. For knowing if we are in the active region, the E B junction, we have to figure out if E B junction is forward biased or reverse biased. Let's, let's look at that. VE, we just found it as 1.45, right? So I'm going to just write it down here, 1.45. VB, we found it as 0 0.75. So 0 0.75. Now, based on this 1.45 and 0 0.45, 0 0.75, we can say that the emitter in the emitter base junction, emitter is the positive one and base in is the negative one, right? So the positive one is connected to the P material and the negative one is connected to the N type material. So P to the positive, N to the negative. That means that EBJ is forward biased. Now, now that I check this one, I have to check the collector base junction as well. If the collector base junction is in the reverse bias 
op uh, region of operation, then we are in the active region. Now let's see. Let's go back here. V base was already 0 0.75. What was V collector? We found V collector as um, negative 0 0.5. So that is negative 0 0.5. So in the collector emit collector base junction, that is technically this junction, the negative voltage is connected to the p-type material while the positive one is connected to the n-type material. So it's the other way around, therefore we have the CBJ as reverse bias. And we know that if this is the situation, then our BJT is in the active region of operation. So since we are in the active region, it was okay that we used all of these equations. Therefore, we can conclude that our um, the prop, the solution, the results that we got are all correct. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment down comments down below, and um, you can also give me ideas for different videos that you need me to uh, make for this for this channel.